What if God worships me? Hey everybody, Sean here, and welcome to Revealing Truth. And yes, you heard that clip correctly. This is how crazy it's getting. The person we're looking at today is Jermel Witherspoon, and he's the pastor at Liberation United Church of Christ. And the heresy we're listening to today is from him as a guest speaker at Common Good Church, which apparently isn't doing any good for anyone, allowing a sermon like this to play. Today, we will simply be talking from our what ifs again, because we are still in our what ifs space. This is no different than what Satan does. He causes people to doubt God's truth. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? What he's doing is the same with different wording. What if God didn't mean what you think he means? Here's his first opening comment. And worship has been such a safe haven for me. So today, we happen to be talking about this beautiful work that is worship, this beautiful relationship that is worship between us and the divine, this beautiful way of mutual adoration between us and us, <laughs> right? This way of being with people that changes us and being with the divine essence as she changes us. So problem number one is the New Age term divine essence because never is God spoken of that way in scripture. And the second problem is him referring to God as a she, when he's always addressed in the masculine form in the Bible. Yet this is becoming oh too common these days. But let's get to the title of this video. Help me ask this question simply. What if, what if, can you say what if with me? What if God worships me? Can you say that with me? What if God worships me? Now, you don't have to say it if you feel uncomfortable because <laughs> it can feel a little uncomfortable, right? Especially when we don't really understand and live into who God has called us to be and what God is to us and has called us to be to God. Well, yeah, it feels uncomfortable. It's absolute blasphemy. This is how deceived the church is today. I just don't understand how anybody indwelt with the Holy Spirit could actually sit there and listen to this blasphemy. But today, if you will humor me, I would like to speak with you, not about universal truth, but about a truth that has helped me center myself in the divine love of God. So not a universal truth, being God's truth, but a truth he'd rather believe, his own truth, which is actually a lie because it contradicts God's truth. But it makes him feel more comfortable, which tells us he's one of the ear-tickling preachers we're warned of in 2 Timothy 4.3. This video is him explaining Genesis 16, how he understands it. Let me begin with my truth about this portion of the text. And this is what he and many false teachers do. They preach what they want scripture to mean to support an already established belief or agenda, rather than allowing scripture to explain and demonstrate God's truth. This is what we call eisegesis. This whole blasphemous sermon is a train wreck and a headache to watch with statements like this. A God who worships me is quite the statement. I know, but follow me. Now I get it, we've started to worship a very big heteronormative white Jesus that we constantly thank for standing between us and a mean God. Or we are so caught up in taking each moment to say thank you to a God who has been wrestling with a mean devil and finally wins the bargain and then sacrifices God's own son because God has some fetish with blood. I actually had to take a couple of ibuprofen watching this. 
so we're not going to watch the whole thing, but I will leave the full link below if you want to. But I can't see them allowing this to be public for long because of the complete blasphemy it is. So let's just get to his absurd statements about God worshiping us. Maybe in worship, we find that God. Maybe all of this is a search to find the God who worships us. What is worship? For our time together, I name it as a mutual affection. What if this understanding of a God who is so infatuated with their self, that anything that gets in the way of them being in the center is destroyed? What if this is quite the contrary? See, God, I believe, isn't intimidated by what is God. God is not intimidated by what is indeed all of its handiwork. God looks at God's image, I believe, in God's, God's, small g, and sees the beauty of creation and is secure in God's self. And now he's promoting the little God's theory. Worship is not a mutual affection. It's an expression of reverence, praise, and adoration to God the creator of the universe and savior of all mankind. This is not a mutual thing. This is God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth and does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. This man may have taken blasphemy to a new level and I pray for anyone listening to him to stop immediately because he's leading you down the road to hell. I've got to stop it here for today, so please feel free to leave your comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.